my name is Philip. As uh, as he said, I'm the uh, founder and COO of uh, Morales. And Morales, shortly, is a um, infrastructure platform in in crypto. We provide data APIs and other developer tools for many of the large um, uh, consumer platforms, wallets, and uh, portfolio managers or trading platforms in, in crypto. And this talk was titled Community and Capital, but really it's going to be about how to, um, how to grow your business through bottoms up marketing, including how to build a community from, from scratch. Could I just ask uh, every one of you in the audience, do you have any entrepreneurs or like business owners in the audience? Oh, that's awesome. That's more than I imagined. A lot of them, actually. Um, so hopefully, some of this can be useful for you. Uh, most of it will be focused around our story, how we did it. Doesn't mean that it's the right thing for everyone to do. Uh, if you're not running, like this is a software business, maybe it's not applicable to everyone. But anyway, this will be our story at Morales. But first of all, I want to show you something cool. So within less than a year of launching Morales, we had more website visitors than Alchemy, Infura, Quicknode, and Open Zeppelin combined. And maybe you don't know this space of dev tools in crypto, but these were the giants when we launched three years ago. They had already been around for years. And within less than a year, we managed to get the amount of traction to uh, not only outpace these individually, but also combined. And today I'll be sharing the strategy behind how we did this and how we later on turned those into uh, customers and how we managed to, from that community, attract customers such as MetaMask, Blockchain.com, Opera, Nike, and, and many more through this bottoms-up motion. And here's what we'll cover more in detail. How to build a community for your product starting from nothing. How to then turn those, uh, that community into your best customers. And finally, if we have some time I'll also cover how we uh, raise capital for Morales, which we have done two times, in total about $50 million. But we'll see, depending on how this goes, we might have some time for that. Or if you have questions, we'll take that also. And all of this is without any connections or social following. We started that from scratch. We didn't know any investors. And we didn't have any traction for our product when we started, obviously. Um, and maybe some of you are shaking your head. It's like, ah, oh, it's impossible. I cannot do this without knowing anyone. But I'll show you the strategy that we used, and then uh, we'll see, maybe you can do the same. And just shortly about myself, I've uh, been working in crypto and blockchain since 2017, helping mainly devs. Uh, in the beginning, in the educational world of teaching Solidity and helping engineers come into the industry. And since 2021, through Morales, where we're also helping developers, but through dev tooling instead, and uh, data APIs, and so on. And all of what we've done at Morales have been based on building a bottoms-up Go to market motion by impacting lots and lots and lots of developers who eventually uh, turns out that they get jobs at major firms and then they like to use our tools. So, building that community of developers that later turn into uh, customers. And I will quickly talk about Morales and the problem we solved to give you the context of then the strategy that we uh, developed. So, blockchain infrastructure used to be complex, still is very complex to a large degree inefficient uh, tech, slow indexers, very unreliable. You combine data providers from many different sources. And you have to enrich it with off-chain data for prices or NFT metadata. And it turns out that you build up enormous teams internally if you're a big company that just does this specific thing. And it wastes time and money that you could have spent going to market. And then you have to do all of this for all of the chains that you want to be active on. And we boiled this down into this graphic. Like even building the most simple use case of taking Vitalik's wallet, getting all of his assets on EVM, with the traditional providers takes about 4,000 API calls because it's a big wallet. And with Morales, we've boiled that down to about 18 API calls to get all of that, what we saw in the previous slide. And that's why we've been having a lot of success with major wallets, for example. And if you're interested in the APIs, you can talk to, about, talk to me later, but this presentation is not about our APIs, actually. It's how we built up the go-to-market motion. So we'll start on that, on point number one, how to build a community. The question that we started asking ourselves first is, what is community? Like, What is the type of activity that we actually want to drive? Because how do we know that we're successful if we don't know what we're going to drive? 
Are we going to drive Twitter followers, Discord members? Are we going to in increase our YouTube view count? What is it actually that we want to get out of this community? Because it's a fancy word, and a lot of people probably mean different things when they say it. And all of these metrics I mentioned are important for a bottoms-up go-to-market motion, but they might not be the most important when it comes to building a community. So we eventually landed in that community is people who build and contribute to our product and to our world, not to Morales. So we focused on that, to make people in our space actually put in value into the community, not just that they follow us on Twitter and they view our content, but that they actually help out uh, themselves. They are putting energy back into the product, back into the community. And that can take the shape, in, like, that can be in different shapes. It can be helping out in Discord, helping other people get started. It can also be in terms of actually building on the product, maybe building, in our case, open source SDKs on top of Morales, or they're building like applications that are built with Morales and they're sharing that story, that journey, maybe in an open source format with the rest of the community to help others. Or maybe they're recording tutorials on YouTube on their own and sharing that. That was the kind of community that we wanted to build and what we are focusing on. The second question is why build community? And this might seem like an easier question because obviously having a community is super nice. They're going to be your brand ambassadors in their career. They're going to be your best testers, your best users, your most sticky customers. They will stick by your product regardless if it has flaws compared to your competitors. Um, they will be your alpha testers, beta testers. They will stick around because they love the brand, they love the product, and maybe they even love you as a founder or as an employee at that company because you put in so much energy into it. So they will provide you with the initial sticky revenue, they will help you reach product market fit because they love the brand, they love the product. And now, the big question is how do we do it? How do we build community? How do we go from no developer in the world knowing about Morales to millions of developers knowing about Morales? And the strategy is, like we always say, it's simple but it's not easy. And you're going to need to be providing massive amounts of value into the market helping developers on a wide scale. In our case, that uh, meant producing a lot of content. Uh, and solving the problems that developers had today, or when we did it, uh, regardless of what product they were using, because obviously they were not Morales users. So us providing a bunch of Morales content, that wouldn't make sense because no one would be searching for Morales. Um, so instead, we wrote about on our blog, we spoke about it at events, and we spoke about it on YouTube, about all of the problems that we were seeing in the market with the traditional tools. And the, the secret here and that, that we uh, used was that we were hooked into, hook into a lot of adjacent topics, even competitive solutions, and help developers with tutorials, with guides, for all sorts of things crypto, completely unrelated to Morales. And like some examples of, because this YouTube channel that we built eventually grew into a big YouTube channel for devs, and some of these videos reached 200,000 views. And the most popular videos on our channel, like building a token on Binance Smart Chain, it didn't even use Morales. None of it used Morales. But it was a hyped up topic that got a lot of search volumes, that got a lot of traction in the market. So we thought, hey, let's create a tutorial about that. Let's just help people do this stuff, regardless if it used our tools or not. Maybe it used like our RPC node or something. But that was like 5%, maybe. And the same was true for all of the others. And that meant that we, well, we did the same thing on our blog. Our blog became really big because we would just publish content, anything that could help developers get started. And that attracted millions and millions of readers that wanted to build in this space. And once you've captured them once, even though the initial capture maybe wasn't Morales related or related to your product, they will subscribe to the blog or they will subscribe to your newsletter or to your channel and they will watch the next thing. Or they will come into the community and Next thing you know, they will be influenced by people in the community that do love the product and eventually be sucked into that whole rabbit hole. And this strategy from, from our perspective was to go really, really broad. And that had the positive <laughs> impact of um, us gaining a lot of eyeballs. We, because we covered every topic developer related. Sometimes it wasn't even developer related. Anywhere that there was traffic, we would put our content in front of them in, that, in those specific search terms. 
and we will get eyeballs on our brand and our product eventually. Maybe that's not a strategy that's going to work for you, and it has some downsides. But if, you're, if you need eyeballs for, for your brand, you have no one looking at your brand, no one looking at your product, uh, that strategy can work. It, it did work for us. The downsides are that you get a lot of people signing up for your product, using your product, trying to use your product, that don't, barely knows what your product does, because they learned about it in a, in a way that wasn't related to it. So we still are challenged by this problem today. Even now, a lot more people know about Morales and use Morales. We still get people who sign up and try to use the product for something that it wasn't meant to do, just because we have so much content covering everything in the development world of crypto and blockchain. The next step in this whole funnel is how to nurture it, right? So we have all of the attention, we have all of the people's eyeballs watching our stuff and seeing our brand, and now we need to take all of those eyeballs and turn it into a community of some sort. And here's also about like, putting in a lot of energy into it. Step number one is, of course, to concentrate this energy into one place. So in our case, it was Discord. It is for many projects in crypto. Uh, get everyone to sign up, get everyone to get on your email list and eventually funnel them into a single place where they can interact and help out. And then you need to lead by example as a founder or as a uh, leader in this company and continue to um, contribute with value into the community of build from primarily building in public. So show your community the stuff that you're going through building your own business, building your own software, building your own product, the struggles that you go through, the challenges that you go through, and build it together with them. That will not only get them to you know, relate to your brand, relate to your product, and be a part of building it, but they will also see that, hey, maybe I should also share what I'm building in this community and then help out others with that. So we want to encourage people back to the metric that we talked about, like what do we want to achieve? We want people to build and contribute to the community, input things into the community, and that's how we do that. So we get them to build, contribute, and share inside of this community. And then also, I can't understate how much time and energy as a founder you have to put into being inside of the community, interacting with them, having live streams with them, and really building that personal connection with the core members of your community, because that's going to pay back. It's kind of like a retirement account. Like You're not going to see the return immediately. You're going to continue to put in money, put in energy. And eventually, once, uh, once it's time to, uh, to redeem that, you'll be seeing the value. And eventually, this will come back to you when you put in energy into this. And the impact will surprise you if you do this. If you commit to it, you will find the, uh, the, the core community members are going to be your co-founders, maybe, they're going to be lifelong customers of yours. They're going to be your best and most loyal employees. I've spoken to many founders of similar companies and similar, with similar go-to-market motions, and almost always, like your best employees, they're hired from your community. They're your best core contributors, and the same was true for Morales. The whole founding team basically came out of people who contributed very early on, and they're still around years later. And as we talked about before, your community members will pick your solution over a superior solution just because they love the product, love the community, and love the brand. And that's how we did it at Morales. That's how we got millions and millions of people to watch our content, read our blog, more than any other competitor in the space. I do have a few slides also on fundraising, how we did that, but I'm going to stop here and see if there's any questions on this uh, go-to-market and community building topic first. Uh, which uh, channels were the more effective to engage with your community? I think I've seen a lot of your YouTube videos, but did you use other channels as well? Sorry, could you repeat the first one? What was the most effective? Channels. Oh, channels, yeah. We have two channels in the beginning that were uh, effective. Number one is search, so Google uh, and other search engines. Th that was how we uh, like really took off in the beginning. And we had a, a guy in our founding team that is very good at search engine, but it's no rocket science. Like You put out good content, and then with slight optimizations, uh, you eventually go to the top if you just continue, continue at it, if you're in a small enough niche, um, and you build up your brand reputation. That is still our number one channel today. Like It's been out for three years, because we continue to just hammer that. Uh, YouTube is number two, um, but YouTube is also harder to attribute, so it could be that YouTube is actually bigger, but because you don't have that direct, like someone clicking a link, you can see it comes from Google, it's harder to know how many people were affected by that. So it could actually be that YouTube is number one. So 
what, it, what happens if you have a community? I have a fairly large community, but everything we've always offered the community has been for free, usually mm. based around education. How do, you take, how do you take a model like that and then monetize it? That's a really good question. I, the current Morales community is free. The previous company that I built between 2017 and 2021 <clears throat> as an educational community, that was to a large extent a paid community. You, ha you had to pay for the, uh, the courses and education that we did. I'm not sure that model works anymore because the, now there's so much free content. At the time, there wasn't as much free content about these kinds of topics. Um, so I don't think I'm the correct person to, to answer this question because our community now also is free and we monetize on the product usage, uh, which is what I've seen most software companies do. But you also have, like one example that doesn't do it that way is Apple. So like the Apple developer community, you have to pay their license thing to be part of the forum and be part of the thing. And it, sure, it's like, a, I don't know, I don't develop on iOS, but I think it's like 100 bucks a year or something. And the benefit you get out of that is that everyone who's in there is super committed because they've paid like the entrance fee. Because that's the issue with free communities is that you have people kind of come and go. So I don't have the answer for you, unfortunately. But I can only imagine that in some way there needs to be some product features that are super valuable that's kind of part of that package or something else that's just incredible value to... to like Exclusivity means a lot to some people, right? If you have people who are really dedicated, just having a smaller subset of the community where the most dedicated fans that they can interact on their own that can mean something, but yeah, I, I shouldn't pretend to have the answer to, to your question, but congrats on building the community in the first place. That's really big. How do you keep your users engaged? Do you have like metrics and then um, based on what they've watched, you're, you're nurturing and providing more insights for them, promoting? Yeah, that, that's a key, uh, a, a really key question and a good question. I, I come back again to our product being the main thing, uh, the usage of our product. Um, at the end of the day, like the, the core people in the community are usually building something with the product. And so number one, the, the product needs to be really good and you need to continue to ship the features that the users want. But in crypto, it's even harder than that because you have such a high churn rate of startups. Startups come and go at an incredible pace in crypto, which is a problem that really we can't affect. Um, in terms of the community only, there, I think the only thing that, that we would do is we would host you know, live streams and hackathons and like, try our best to, to build engagement. But I found it difficult to keep to keep users around for a long time if they're not engaged with the product. Um, and I think maybe in the beginning we tried harder to keep all of these free users around. And I think maybe that served us through a lot of this like hackathon and prices and, and uh, different events in the community. Now that we've grown a bit bigger and we, act and we have like larger customers funding the operation, we're not as focused on keeping around every single person around the core community of builders is super important, then there's gonna be a wider circle of people that kind of comes and goes. Maybe that's okay. Um, I don't know if I answered your question, but I took a stab at it. Thank you. Any more questions? All right, cool. Um, I can also run through the final slides real quick. I have five minutes. And this is less of a strategy more sharing our story also of how we managed to fundraise because we got a ton of no's um, before we got one yes that eventually just turned the whole thing around. Um, and I had never fundraised before. Uh, before Morales, now we've raised two rounds of a total of $50 million, a seed round and a Series A. And I didn't know anyone in VC. I didn't know any investor. Uh, and I'm not ex saying that I'm an expert in raising funds, but here is how we did it. Um, you're going to need a great product vision and team. That's baseline. Like you're not going to raise funds without that. But we tried every single um, way to get in contact with investors because we didn't know anyone. At least that's what we thought. Um, and we did eventually scour our network. So a network is going to be important, obviously. If you don't have that, then you need to work on building your network of people that like you as a person, that you meet at conferences, and, and build that out. 
because eventually you'll find people who can give you at least warm intros. Because I figured out from the start that if you fill out the contact us form at sequoia.com, you're probably not going to have a very high success rate. Um, so we were looking for warm intros in the beginning, but even that didn't really work. Like we got the meeting, but we didn't really get further than, you know, okay, we got a warm intro, we put the meeting, but we didn't get any checks written out of that. It was the thing that eventually unlocked it all was that we did find a person in our social circles, in our network, that was also a Morales user. And not only a Morales user, but a, like Morales evangelist. Like he loved Morales and everything that Morales stood for. And we had a conversation with him, and it turned out he knew an investor at a major uh, VC, EQG Ventures. And that was what eventually took it over the edge, because he managed to evangelize his friend at EQG Ventures that we were the best brand in crypto. And we as founders, me and my co-founder, were amazing people, and he said, the product is amazing. And that's eventually what got all of this over the line with the major investor. And once you have one, you're going to get a lot more because investors are just like everyone else. They have FOMO, so when one invests, the rest <laughs> comes walking. Um, and it's really hard to find this evangelizer, but the good thing is you only need to find one. So that's what worked for us. Nothing else worked. Um, find people in your network who love you as a founder, love your product, love your vision, and will like, go and fight for you. Uh, that's the only thing that worked for us, and that's our uh, little story. Thank you so much for listening. Appreciate it.